I would like to give a word to the next speaker, uh, Ms. Laura Pereira. She is from uh, South America and she has now early morning. She is with us here and I would like to give a floor, online floor to her. She is from Aboisa Commodity Brokers. Laura, are you with us? Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. And but I don't see you. I hear you, but try to yes. Oh, perfect. You are with us. Thank you very much. You can share your presentation. I'm here. Good. I'm so sorry about my voice, but here in Brazil, the temperature is very very difficult these days. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can you see my screen? No, I see you, but I don't see your screen. Okay, wait a second. Try to share presentation. Yes, sh share a screen. Yes, one yes. sec. Oh, now it's okay. Just oh, okay. make it full screen, please. Okay, it's okay now? Yes, now it's okay, okay. Okay, perfect. So, uh, hello you all. Uh, first, I would like to thank APK for the invitation. It is my pleasure to represent my company here again. Uh, today, we will talk about the impact of COVID-19 in the sunflower oil market in South America. So, uh, my name is Laura Pereira, as Irina just said. Thank you, Irina. Um, I have graduated an in international affairs with an MBA in agribusiness. Today I am specialist in sunflower oil and olive oil here in Aboisa, and I will do my best to talk in English, but please remember that I am Spanish and I'm living in Brazil, so the language is very <laughs> difficult for me. <laughs> well, let's begin talking a little bit about my company, just you to understand a little better. Uh, so Aboisa was founded in 1987. Uh, we are the largest brokerage company in Latin America. Our founder had the idea to start our business because his father was a known engineer who built 150 processing plants here in Brazil. Just yet to have an idea, today we have uh, 250. So we are divided in business units to serve from raw material to end product all the departments of a processing plant. Uh, here we have uh, our timeline, if you can see. If you want to check more information about our company, please check our website below. Here are some of my our business units. Uh, this is the soft oils business unit. It's my business unit where I'm working. Um, it's the oils, you, the oils you can find in the supermarket as corn oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil. The palm and melodic oils, the oleochemicals products, it's like the byproducts of the process, the animal profit, uh, animal byproducts, the feed ingredients, animal nutrition, and the process ingredients that are the chemical material for process. Today, we negotiate with more than 60 countries all, all over the world. We are a source of information for many communication channels such as Bloomberg or Reuters, OFI, etc. And of course, today we are FOSFA members as well. Well, now you know me and my company a little better. Let's talk about uh, of some flower oil here in South America. Here we have the countries, okay, uh, Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, etc. Today we will focus on Argentina and Bolivia and some of the struggles they are facing during this pandemic, okay? First, we will talk about Argentina. It's needed to talk about some information that is important as their socioeconomics. So their capital is Buenos Aires. Their population exceeds the 45 million. Their area is almost 3 million square kilometers. Today their currency is in pesos argentinos that it's equivalent to one dollar in 36 and volatile, volatile, you know how the, work, the currency works here it's in Latin America. Their GDP is almost 60 million, 6 million. Uh, their main production is soybean and sunflower and their basic salary is 
318.4. Their main vegetable oils production is uh, corn, peanut, soybean, cotton, and sunflower, but we will focus on sunflower here. It's not the same volume as you guys in Ukraine, but uh, we can tell that is the main source here in this hemisphere. Here are some details about their crop, their export oil, and their export seeds since 2018. In general, their crop decreased a little during these years because they are investing in other products as well, and the seeds have a lower yield. Regarding the export, they are using more locally, and also the pandemic scenario caused the export market some changes, and they needed to retreat a little bit. I will explain about it a little bit later. Now, regarding Bolivia, just being the same page as Argentina, let's talk about their socioeconomics. It's the same as Argentina, as I tell you. Uh, it's not the same production, but they have some meaning here in Latin America, for example. So their capital is La Paz. Their population exceeds uh, one bill, well, 11 million. Their area is more than 1 million square kilometers. Their currency today are, today are the Bolivianos, equivalent say 6.89 for one dollar. Their, their GDP is almost 22,000. Uh, their main production are soybean and sunflower, and the basic salary is 270.2 euro. Their main vegetable oils is not only soybean, they work also with corn and soybean and uh, the sunflower oil that we will focus today as well. In this graphic, uh, we can analyze the same as Argentina, crop export of oils and seeds since 2018. Bolivia is increasing their planting area each year. Uh, they do not waste the opportunity to export their product for the Indian community here in Latin America, be it refined or even for crude sunflower oil. Now that we understand how these countries are valuable for America, let's talk about what kind of situation they were facing since the COVID-19 started. Well, first, the lockdown. It's not different as Fabrizio say and everyone here today. Uh, this happened all over the world in different ways, but it's still the same. I think here in Latin America, it was no different than Ukraine, for example, or Europe. Uh, the lockdown happened between states locally and then between countries. So even operations in trucks were closed for a long time. The trucks uh, that were already loaded by the time had to keep waiting until they could cross the borders again. So it was a very difficult scenario for, for us here in Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, all these countries that use a lot of commercial export in trucks. Uh, then, of course, they close again, the barriers and they open and so on. Of course, this is no information, uh, no new information for you guys. Uh, then they started the frontiers, uh, they open again, but with the quarantine clause for anyone and anything yet with the free circulation for basic needs, uh, also with the days of parenting. As the operations decreased drastically, the producers started to force vacation to their employees and stop their plans with no idea that when they will come back and stuff like that, that you understand already. As they become weeks and weeks became months of reduced working hours, many companies were forced to make massive resignation here. I think you had the same scenario there. This scenario remains until today as one of the main problems in Latin America. The unemployment rate. And it, it will keep rising here, not just in Argentina and Bolivia, but here in Brazil as well. In Argentina, for example, they have 9.6% versus 8.1% and increasing. Now let's talk a little bit about their economy. Uh, the economy in both countries had a triple wave shock. First, the offer. As the working hours were reduced and the industry had a lack of production, their demand, normally with the customers switching their products for other cheaper 
and of course changing the quality of the products for the final customers of the market. And then they find us. Uh, the financial situation of the small companies, for example, because they, they could not bear all the extra costs that happen. This erased them from the market. And also for the big ones that have a very big impact, we stop to give credit terms to their, their customers, even for new ones. So these three points remain until today in Latin America. But if we talk about all the stuff that we are supporting, let's talk about the high prices we are facing here with the agribusiness. When you put together all these points that I mentioned, the only thing that can happen is the uptrend volatile prices that remains without correction until today. Here you can see a graphic from writers of prices of palm oil in green, soybean oil in yellow, and sunflower oil in blue. It's not the price that uh, is scared the most, but the uptrend uh, curve that we are facing. And we cannot see an end in this situation until today. Here in Latin America, we are facing also some situations about the weather uh, that are not helping at all. We are have a long known raining periods that cause drop in a way that the fluvial channels that connect Argentina with the existing parts or of even with the, their partners as uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, Brazil, are in low levels, what makes it impossible for the circulation of vessels with low draft that, if you allow me to say, usually have, have more availability here in Latin America. If you can see in this image, this is the Paraná River. It, it is the second biggest river in South America, losing only to Amazon's river and also the eighth biggest river in the world connecting all the countries I have just mentioned. It is source of energy and fishing to tens of millions of families. Now you can check these images. They are the registers. Uh, they are reducing one of the, of the lowest levels ever seen in this river. So we are facing more than two years of drought, and it is the main concern regarding the climate changes of South America. It is very impressive to see how this changes over the, the, the years. This scenario created other as uh, low circulation of vessels because only the small ones can reach the parts, the less room available of the vessels, less flow of the maritime roads, lack of containers, nothing new for you because it's the same thing in all over the world. In some countries here in Latin America, for example, as Bolivia, the shipping lines release very low availability for its destination. So, for example, the, policy, the possibility of loading only like 300 tons uh, per month. So they needed to choose a destination to work, to work even uh, not working with their usual clients. Of course, with Latin America in this scenario, they needed new strategies for some clients. So they switched the operation from maritime to highway, even choosing not to work with some destination for a little period. If you allow me to say this is happening until today, for some operations that I'm working, uh, they stop the possibility of loading. They do not have spaces in vessels until uh, February or next year. So this is happening now, right now, since more or less like July of this year. There is no need to say that if you add to the map, the whole freight scenario that the world is confronting, prices can only increase. Here you can see a, freight, a graph of the freight rate of this year, and it seems that they have not reached the sailing yet. All the maritime roads are rising. This is a graphic from the economics, but you can see this kind of information all over the world, actually. And with all the maritime agents we are facing that we, is talking with Aboisa daily, it's changing every day. Uh, prices increasing monthly, even weekly, with some destinations. And the lack of containers, the, the non-availability of containers is a situation that we are facing that can only increase prices for us. It's not only the product, but the operation itself. To conclude, to conclude, I can ask you, are there opportunities in this major crisis? We know that Argentina is the main exporter uh, of sunflower oil in Latin America. 
all for all over South uh, Center or even North America. They have a uh, half of the production that Ukraine has, but time to time they can be very aggressive with prices, and they usually are more aggressive for markets as uh, Mexico, Colombia, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Canada. Uh, not just in pricing, but also because we have here an import duty for Mercosur, for example. I think every exporter here today already lost some operation for Argentina sometimes. As we could see during this uh, presentation, they are facing some struggles with the weather issues and the post-pandemic scenario that can be very uh, that can be uh, irreversible. If that happens, the exporter here will not we need uh, to switch their trading operation and we'll need help for good. Usually you work with uh, customers like uh, China or India, maybe in North Africa. These countries are very aggressive on their negotiations and usually they leave several options open to close at the best price, not only for a long relation uh, terms sometimes and just pricing. On the other hand, if you analyze the customers here in South America, have, they have a uh, constancy in their purchases. They uh, can value uh, how the quality is important. Uh, so they usually can pay more, not forcing prices down and choosing to have a long-term relationship with their suppliers. Even with the smaller volumes, they can be very aggressive in their negotiations and they can add more margins for you guys. So therefore, let's face what is happening as an opportunity for Ukraine to have a new strategy. Any interest in investing your time in this side of the world? Here you can see my contact with the QR code if you need some extra information. And please, if you want, uh, check here as well the QR code of my presentation to check any information. Thank you so much for the invitation again, AP5. If you have any question, I'm here available. Thank you very much, Laura, and thank you very much for such great presentation and so much information about South America and Argentina and Brazil. And I suppose that.